Tonight I'm going to take this photo with my iPhone. It's dead set easy. Stick around, I'm going to show you how you can take the same photo on your phone. It's really not that hard. To take any sort of photo like this, you're going to need really just a plan. And once you've got the planning down and got the stuff you need, you're going to be able to replicate this shot anywhere in the world. The first and foremost thing you're going to need is to get away from the city lights. And where I am here is at Lake Aragon, which is a little bit deceptive because the water that you see behind me is actually the Pacific Ocean. And if we go that way further, quite a long way, New Zealand will be there. So where we are here, even if there was a city right behind us here, the galactic core, that Milky Way, which we'll talk about in a second, rises up behind me here and we're facing that way. So the light from that city, if it was there, is not really affecting us. So number one, get away from the city lights. Number two, along with that, away from the city lights, you also need to have no moon. So if there's a moon rising up behind us here, or it's going to be in the frame, it's also going to damage the photo. It's not going to work as well as it did in the photo that I just showed you. You can use the moon a little bit to your advantage, but I've covered that in other videos. For the photo that we're taking here tonight, we want no moon. Number three is that you need to know where that line of stars is. That's what we call the galactic core, that orange gaseous cloud and that line of stars. You need to know where it is because it moves all through the year on, depending on the day that it is. And we use a tool for this. We call it photo pills or the one I use is photo pills. Now the way we use photo pills, you go into this night augmented reality. And I'm going to use these two rocks that are here to take this photo. Now I'm going to look at the time up the top left hand corner there. I need to come here and be in about this position here at about seven o'clock and if i'm here at seven o'clock with a tripod shooting straight between these rocks here i'm going to get that line of stars coming up between those two rocks it should be epic there's two more things that we need here uh, one is a source of light and i'm going to light these rocks with different light to give it more texture because there's a lot of texture on these rocks here and adding that light is going to make that photo really pop last thing you're going to need is a tripod you're going to need a phone holder on that tripod to hold your phone because these photos that we're taking is gonna be 30 seconds long, so you absolutely need a tripod. If you don't have a tripod, you're only gonna get 10 seconds. 10 seconds means less stars, less detail. It's not gonna be as good. Get yourself a tripod and you're gonna get this good photo. Once you've got all those things, all we need to do now is wait till it's dark. So once it's dark, we gotta come back up here. The tide's gonna be a little bit higher, but we'll be fine up here where we are here. And uh, we'll get a photo. Things have happened, as you can see, one, the clouds have come in a bit, two, the tide has come up a lot. And three, this is a public area. And it's a public holiday this weekend, long weekend. So there's lots of kids running around with torches. So this is gonna be difficult. I'm about uh, 100 meters from the rocks. I'm gonna take a photo here. We'll see how we go. Hold on. All right, the clouds have moved a little bit on. The kids don't seem to be over here now. So I think we'll be right. So I've got the camera set up where we were this afternoon. And I've got it pointing up where I used photo pills earlier. So I've just set up photo pills again, get the angle right, and now I know I'm right to shoot. I'm going to use this little small rig LED light. And the way I'm going to use this is very briefly, because you don't want the rocks, like just like that, you don't want the rocks to be too blown out in this sort of a photo. Anyway, I'll, I'll leave this running, but I'll turn this light off so you can see what's going on. In the camera now, go to the arrow at the top, hit the night mode button, push it all the way to the side there. So we've got 30 seconds maximum. And I'm just going to take the first photo. And what I'll do is just turn this video light back on because that will light, that will light the rocks in front and I'll probably blow it all out because it's just too bright. I'm just making sure I've got the, the angle right through the rocks with the galactic core. The clouds have moved out pretty much to the horizon now. I wouldn't be surprised if they're in the bottom of the shot. I took a few more shots that I didn't show you guys. Let's have a look at this. I'd say the rocks are going to be too bright. Hey, anyway, that's not too bad. I don't mind that at all. The composition's pretty good. Um, if anything, I'd probably move it, just move the camera a little bit to the right. I'll do that. Just to get us a little bit more room through there, I'll take another shot. And this time I won't shine as much light. That's pretty damn good. I'm happy with that, happy with the composition, happy with the light and everything. Um, what I didn't do though is shoot raw. I need to shoot that raw max so we've got good editing abilities later. So I'll just finish shooting this one and I'll get back down on the sand and I'll tell you how I did it because 
it's a little bit precarious. There you go. I reckon that is one of the best Astro shots I've taken. The foreground and the stars, I don't think there's any phone that's as good as the iPhone in doing that, getting both of those things in focus. This is going to edit up really, really well. I needed to get off those rocks. The water was coming higher. It was, I was waiting to bust an ankle or something. Poor Dale Wotherington. Look at the side, the rock on the right-hand side there. It looks like it's a face um, kind of opening up and growling or something. I'm gonna go and edit this. So I'll wait till tomorrow though, um, when it's a bit lighter and we'll do a good job of it. Editing this photo is dead set simple. I'm using Adobe Lightroom here. I am using the paid version and some of the things that I'm using here, you are going to need the paid version for. As I look at this photo, I look at a couple of things. One thing with the iPhone is that the sky in an Astro shot is generally very hazy. So I'm going to deal with this photo in two ways. I'm going to deal with the foreground elements and the sky elements. I'll deal with the foreground elements last. So the way we deal with the sky elements first is go to the masking tool, that little circle down the bottom, hit the plus and not select subject, Shano, that's the wrong one, select sky. It's gonna go through and find where the sky is in this photo and it always does a pretty bloody good job. Go to the effects tab and I'm going to increase the dehazing slider a fair way. That's an awful long way. Now we'll bring the, the uh, clarity up as well and the texture up just a little bit as well. That's all, I'm not doing anything else to the sky. Really don't think we need to. Hit the tick for that one. And now we're going to look at the foreground elements. And the way that we deal, as I look at this photo, I go, the foreground's kind of too bright for the sky. So we're gonna bring it all down a little bit. And I'm gonna do that with a brush. I'm gonna go in the masking tool again, hit the brush. There we go there. And just gonna paint in the highlighted parts only. So along this rock here, that looks pretty bright. We go along the top of this rock here, that looks pretty bright as well. And also over on that one there. That's all. Now I'll go to the light tab and I'm gonna bring down the shadows and bring down the whites. You can see when I move that slider up and down, what the area that it's affecting. So I'll keep that down a little bit there. It's looking a little bit closer. Might try the black as well. That's pretty good. One thing I will add to this is there's a lot of texture in those rocks. So I'll add a bit more texture, add a little bit more clarity. Overall, I think that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna hit the tick on that and I also wanna have a look at the photo as a whole. And I tend to do this as I go through the photo. So just push on the screen, it'll give you a before and an after. As your finger's on the screen, it'll go before, and there's the after. I think that looks pretty good. One more thing that I do want to do to this is give, give it a little bit of vignette, but only a partial vignette. And I'm going to do that with the brush tool again. So I don't think we need to vignette the whole sky. The sky's already quite dark. So one more brush, and I'm just gonna go in the corner along here and up a little bit and just bring it on an angle down. I'll go to light and I'm just gonna drop the exposure just a little bit, just a little bit, that's all. Have a look at the whole photo. I think that overall looks pretty damn good. Do I wanna do anything else? As I look at this, I think the sky is not quite popping as much as I want. So I'll go to the brush again this is the new install, or my new install of Adobe Lightroom. I haven't used the gradient tool yet, but the radial gradient. So we'll do that one. About that large, I'm gonna turn it around there. Now bring it down onto the core, go to the effects tab and add clarity. That's it. I'm pretty happy with that. Hit the tick and before and afters, it looks pretty damn good. I'll upload this now and uh, good to go. All right guys, see you next week.